episode of The Dog Show features Emil Tiersman. Emil is the co-founder of Animalist, a Swedish company that makes beautiful and customizable art for dogs and their humans. With Animalist, you can choose from over 60 dog breeds to honor your four-legged companion in the best way possible with a modern and stylish print. In the interview, we discuss the characteristics of modern dog art and how Animalist delivers stunning prints to over 40 countries around the world. Hey, Emil, welcome to the podcast today, The Dog Show. Thanks for coming on. Hi, thank you. It's my pleasure. It's great to have you on. I'm excited to hear more about Animalist, which is your brand and, and your baby. But um, before we dive into the world of modern dog art and personalized presents for, for dog lovers, can you tell me a bit more about Peanut? I believe Peanut is part of the inspiration behind the, the business. Yeah, Peanut is mine and my girlfriend's little staffie. She's a little black staffie and she's four years old now. Um, and uh, yeah, we got her yeah, back in 2000, what was it, beginning to 2018. And uh, I mean, I've, I've grown up with dogs. I had um, two, we, my family had two Rottweilers uh, when we were growing up. So I'm used to these kind of real big dogs, especially mm. when you're a baby, they're huge. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now that, you know, me and my girlfriend were actually uh, looking to get a dog, we wanted a big dog, but then we live in the city. So we ended up uh, going with a staffy because, you know, they're kind of like a big dog in a small package. You can still get down and wrestle with them. And so, so Peanut's been our little wrestler for four years now and uh, we love her. Peanut to me doesn't sound so much like a staffy name. <laughs> it's <really> <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, she was quite small in the beginning and did look somewhat like a peanut. So okay, yeah. that's where it comes from. Fair enough. How would you compare the personalities of Rottweilers compared to Stuffies? That's quite an interesting mix there. Yeah. I mean, I was quite small when we had our Rottweilers, so I don't know if I know exactly the difference. But, you know, I, from what I can tell, I think they're pretty similar. The, the real difference is size. Um, mm. Maybe maybe Rottweilers are a little more... Uh, uh, self-confident because of their size. I, I feel like Peanut sometimes because she's quite much smaller gets a little defensive sometimes. But aside from that, I, I think they're quite similar. But yeah, it's I guess hard to say. I guess Rottweilers have a reputation of being um, more likely to be aggressive. I guess whereas Staffies, in, in my my kind of experience with them, I've never had one myself. Not so much. Would mm -hmm. that be a fair assumption or? Yeah, I, I would say so. Although we do meet people sometimes who are afraid just because of her sort of, you know, pit bull looking face. Mm -hmm. um, but 90% of people uh, don't seem to uh, seem to love her more than the other. <laughs> They're very popular uh, stuffies out in Australia, I can tell you that. Yeah, here too. I mean, when we got her, uh, we'd barely see staffies ever. And now that I feel like they're everywhere. It's, uh, it's crazy. So on your website, the... Um the main artwork I think of the dog, which I think it's a stuffy, right? And then on the about page, you've also got a little figurine in between you and Yarn. Is that, is that meant to be peanut as well? That's peanut. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She pops up in our, in our, uh, Instagram and all, everywhere, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah. she's always around. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Um, so how did you get into the world of pet art? You've got a, a design background I, I, I saw, so that's probably the natural path, but how did you kind of end up in this space? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I, I have a background as an art director, so that's kind of uh, within you know the creative world, I guess. And uh, me and my uh, old friend from high school had uh, have both been working for a number of years, and, and we were kind of at a period where we were discussing you know, just doing something else, uh, starting something on her own. And, and I had just, well, Peanut was about a year old, so she had just, you know, entered our lives. And, you know, we, uh, from our own perspective, but also having spoken to other dog owners, just realized that dogs really are a central part of people's lives. I mean, they kind of are your fur baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so we, we just figured, you know, it'd, it'd be cool if we could do something that really, um, you know, celebrates them in a way that, uh, that, uh, yeah, that works in a Scandinavian context. Cause, uh, we, I was actually looking around for art and, and things that were more personalized online. And I, I did 
find some different options. But, you know, in, in our home, at least, and I think in many Scandinavian uh, homes, there is a bit more of a, I guess, um, you know, minimalistic um, look and feel. And so I couldn't quite find that. And that was kind of the inspiration behind what we set out to to do, which is create um, personalized dog art that's also befitting of maybe more Scandinavian styled homes. Uh, and so we just started exploring different um, styles. We have this one line style that we use, which, which is basically j just using one brush stroke to sort of find the the essence, the look of, you know, your dog breed. Uh, and then we have another style, which we call form, which is more of a block art type style. Um, and so, yeah, we sort of landed in those and, and then we built uh, everything around around that, really. And, and we're still working on it. We're still developing. We have new styles that we're uh, currently in the process of developing, which we're really excited to, uh, to finally get out. It's been cooking for a while. So um, when you created a new design or when you created those original designs, what does that process look like? Are they, are they digital designs or are they getting uh, sketched first and then turned into digital? Yeah, it's a combination. It's it's both actually. So in the beginning, it was really all about finding what is like because if you take the the line example, you have one line to sort of uh, create the dog, and that that was quite a challenge in itself. Like you, you know, there's different ways of using one line, but it it can often get a little too crazy if you start mm. you know making too many wiggles. Uh, so we really wanted to keep it as simple as possible so that just sketch process took a long time to find the most simple way of of creating a a dog profile essentially with one line and then once you've done that you want to apply that to like different dog breeds and so it was a combination of using sketches which we then import into a digital form to then uh create different variations for for all the different breeds uh out there um so yeah Messy process, but uh, <laughs> well, the single line is like the epitome of minimalism, as you mentioned. I think. Yeah, <laughs> you can't go. To, there's not much uh, more you can uh, remove from that. <laughs> no. Um, no. So you, I mean, you mentioned it was drawn from Scandinavian inspiration, the the style. Um, but obviously, it, it seems like you have a worldwide appeal. You've got customers in the United States. Now you've got customers in Australia. And my wife loved the look of of your your artworks. So, um, do you think that's a reflection on Scandinavian art and like kind of feeding into the rest of the world? Or do you think it's just that because they're so minimalist that that works in other cultures as well? Yeah, well, I don't know. I've, I've actually lived out, outside of Sweden for a while myself and I've noticed that Scandinavian style and design does have a, a place in, in countries like the US and Australia in general. So I think there's already a an appreciation for more minimalist type uh, design already. And I think it, when we launched, uh, again, I don't think there there's any other, you know, brands who do, who are in the same uh, world when it comes to style. So I think it just worked because there was already that, uh, that audience there, essentially. Mm. Um, I, you know, again, I, I don't think it's for everyone. I think people, some people do like, you know, more, colorful, more, you know, less minimalistic um, art. But I think there's also a, an audience who, who does appreciate the more uh, Scandinavian style. Mm. And, and, yeah, and again, I think the U.S., Australia, and the U.K. all have uh, some some tendencies, uh, from what we've noticed at least. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, do you think that that, like, is what modern pet art is, is about, I guess, is it, but is, I think modern is is like a, a term that really can mean different things. Yeah. But but um, because there's so many different styles. But but I guess it's modern Scandinavian art in our context at least, uh, which is more, yeah. That's a fair point because people are still going to have their own personal preferences for artwork, and as you mentioned, some may prefer like the pop art or more colorful things than than the exactly. Yeah. 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 So tell me more about Animalist then. Um, I guess we've touched mm -hmm. on the process you do to create the the artwork, but um, how does it work from a user's perspective if I want to check out what you're doing and, and um, buy some of the artwork? Uh, well, so the way it works, I mean, just practically, like if you want to order a print, you mean? or Yeah, I guess, yeah. 
let's go down that path i guess the practical path but also just like the experience as well of of like a dog owner that might be interested in in, in getting some personalized artwork right 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 well, um, so the current setup we have right now is basically based on on your breed. So I guess you could call it like semi-customized. So if you have a French bulldog, for example, you could um, you would basically enter a uh, French bulldog, and then you would get a set of two designs, which is the line design I described, and then this other form design. And within those two categories, you can choose you know different colors. So the colors are basically based on what we hope is something that you can fit easily into your home. So they're, uh, yeah, you can you can basically mix and match and 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 hopefully find something that works for you. And then as a final touch, you can uh, add your dog's name at the bottom to to really make it um, personalized. Mm. And and yeah, it's really <laughs> it's really that simple actually. Uh, it is super it's, simple. I've actually gone through that process. I know I know you asked asked you about it, but um, yeah. it's the simplest thing. One of the simplest yeah. things I've had to do in terms of purchasing from an e-commerce store. So um, yeah, that experience is We're really glad good. Glad to hear it. I mean, how many breeds do you have? I know that there was quite a long list when I opened the drop down menu. I didn't look at all of them, but yeah, uh, I'd have to double check exactly how many we're at. But I think it's about 150 at the moment. But that includes some cats too. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, we do have some feline friends in there. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know much about cats, to be honest. Are there a lot of different breeds of cats? Is that what they're called as well with cats? Or Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I, I don't want to say anything that's wrong, but I think it's it's breeds. But there aren't as many. Uh, there are, um, I'm not sure. I think there are, you know, over 300 dog breeds or so, like, mm. you know, recognized. And then there's probably more than that, really. And then there's all the mixed breeds. But in the cat world, there's, um, I'm not sure what the number is, but it's significantly less. Uh, and then an- another thing about cats and dogs is, I mean, there are variations of cats. Some some really do look different from, from the others. Uh, but in general, they're much more similar looking. And, mm. you know, it, it, at least if you just think of the profile, which is kind of what we use as a base for the design, the, the cats are more within the same realm as whereas dogs are, you know, a French bulldog versus a German shepherd is <laughs> from a profile perspective could be different animals. Totally different. But I, there are a lot of dogs that kind of are closely aligned, especially if it's a minimalist drawing or a minimalist piece of art, you could have some breeds which are, are very closely. Um, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. And that, and that, uh, sometimes, you know, you feel like, Oh, you know, from a, from a design perspective, these guys are so close that they're, they could be the same, but we try to make them as close, you know, even if the changes are small, we still try to to include every every little variation, basically. And you've got different sizes as well? You mean uh, of the prints? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have, uh, currently we have three different sizes, basically a small, medium, and large. And those are, they come in either standard US uh, or EU sizes. So the the thinking there is is just it should be easy to find a frame uh, for the print so you know any standard frame should should fit uh, from a frame store yeah perfect um, well I think that kind of covers it I mean as as you said it's a fairly simple process is yeah there, yeah is there anything else that any other advice you'd give dog dog owners out there that are looking to kind of spice up their home with some modern dog art um, and what they should be looking for and where they should be going. Well, I would say just uh, email us any thoughts you have because we're, like I said, uh, always looking to um, explore new ideas and, and, you know, if there's any breeds we're missing or anything, you know, we're, we we love to hear from our customers. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, there's like over 300 breeds. So we do get mails, uh, emails about, you know, oh, could you please add this breed or, you know, do you have anything uh with this mix of dogs so so that is really uh something we appreciate because it's that's the way we can build new new designs and new uh yeah new new work moving forward uh so so basically what i'm saying is if if people are looking (laughs) for anything new just let us know and we'll try to create it for you (laughs) yeah of course how long does it take you to create a new braid for example or a new design 
a new breed? Well, it, it, it takes, well, it depends on the breed. I mean, if they're like uh, quite unique in their look, it might take a little longer. If they're sort of similar to something that we already have, it might be faster because it's something that we have already worked on. Hmm. So it really depends. Um, but, um, but I would say maybe a few weeks. Uh, and I'm sure you've got a, pop, a pipeline already. So <laughs> we won't get, we do, we do. <laughs> we won't get everyone uh, comp- like messaging you. Um, there's lots of very, niche dog brands dog breeds out there sorry that um there are might only have a handful of owners so <laughs> yeah but uh, but again just just uh let us know we're happy to we're happy to we, we have our list but we're happy to add them to the list that's cool um yeah. so where's the best people place for people to go animalist.art is the website that's the website yep animalist.art and then uh, you can follow us on Instagram as well, which is just at Animalist. Um, and those are the two best places, I would say. Perfect. Um, yeah. We'll share all of that in the show notes. But Emil, thanks so much for sharing your insights on Modern Dog Art and giving us a full breakdown of, of how your business works and how people can get access to your great artworks. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Cheers.